Chapter One of Mary's Grammar by Jane Marset. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jennifer Dalman. Part the First Nouns Lesson One. A little girl was sitting one day with a book in her hand, which she was studying with a woe begotten countenance, when her mother came into the room. Why, Mary, said her mother, what is the matter? You look as if your book were not very entertaining. No, indeed, it is not, replied the child who could scarcely help crying i never read such a stupid book and look she added pointing to the pencil marks on the page what a long hard lesson i have to learn miss thompson says that now that i am seven years old i ought to begin to learn grammar but i don't want to learn grammar it is all nonsense only see what a number of hard words that i cannot understand her mother took up the book and observed that the lesson marked out for her to learn was not the beginning of grammar no mamma the beginning is all about letters of the alphabet and spelling but i am sure i know my letters vowels and consonants too and i can spell pretty well so miss thompson said i might begin here and she pointed out the place to her mother who read as follows there is in the english language nine sorts of words or parts of speech article noun pronoun adjective verb adverb preposition conjunction and interjection when she had finished mary said well mamma is not all that nonsense no my dear but it is very difficult for you to understand so you may skip over that let's see what follows mary seemed much pleased and her mother continued reading an article is a word prefixed to nouns to point them out and show how far their signification extends well mamma that's as bad as the rest and if it is not real nonsense it is nonsense to me at least for i cannot understand it so pray let's skip over that too let us see if something easier comes next said her mother and she went on reading a noun is the name of anything that exists it is therefore the name of any person place or thing now mary i think you can understand that what is your brother's name charles replied mary well then charles is a noun because it is the name of a person and am i a noun as well as charles mamma i is not your name replied her mother when i call you i do not say come here i oh no you say come here mary then mary is a noun because it is your name but sometimes you say come here child is child a noun as well as mary yes because you are called child as well as mary and when i am older mamma i shall be called a girl and not a child and is girl a noun too yes every name is a noun then papa is a noun and mamma is a noun and little sophie is a noun and baby is her other noun because it is her other name and john and george oh what a number of nouns well i think i shall understand nouns at last and her countenance began to brighten up there are a great number of other nouns said her mother sheep and horses cats and dogs in short the names of all animals are nouns as well as the names of persons but the grammar does not say so mamma it is true replied her mother that it does not mention animals but when it says that a noun is the name of everything that exists animals certainly exist so they are included well i think mamma the grammar ought to have said persons and animals or it might have said animals alone for persons are animals you know mary oh yes i know that men women and children are all animals and they are all nouns as well as geese and ducks woodcocks and turkeys oh and my pretty canary bird too and i suppose the names of ugly animals such as rats and frogs and toads and spiders are nouns also certainly replied her mother but look mary the grammar says that the name of a place is also a noun what place mamma all places whatever a town is a place that people live in yes said mary so london and hampstead and york are nouns but a house is a place people live in too mamma therefore house is a noun as well as town what is this place we are now sitting in called mary it is called a room so room is a place to sit in and stable a place to keep horses in and dairy a place to keep milk and butter in and they are all nouns and cupboard is a noun mamma because it is a place to keep sweetmeats in 
certainly replied her mother then the house and the garden and the church and the fields are nouns what great nouns exclaimed mary and are little places nouns certainly this little box is a place to hold sugar plums therefore box is a noun and the keyhole of a door is a place to put a key in so keyhole is a noun and drawer is a noun i am quite sure mamma for it is a place i keep my toys in but mamma i think the keyhole of a lock and the box for sugar plums are more like things than places they are both but things that are made to hold something such as a drawer and a box may also be considered as places especially if they are made for the purpose of keeping the things they hold in safety oh yes said mary papa's desk is a place where he keeps his letters and bills so carefully you know mamma i am never allowed to touch anything in it then there is the tea chest which is a place and a thing too it is a very pretty thing and a very safe place for you know you always keep it locked oh i began to like nouns they make me think of so many pretty things i am glad to hear it my dear said her mother but i think we have had enough of them to-day you must not learn too much at once or you will not be able to remember what you learn we shall find enough to say on nouns for a second lesson continuation of nouns lesson two the following day mary came skipping into the room with her grammar in her hand well my dear said mother i am glad to see that your face is not quite so long as it was at the beginning of your last lesson oh no mamma said mary it is quite a different thing now that you talk to me about my grammar and explain it so nicely i do not promise you mary that it will always be entertaining we cannot learn without taking pains but if you understand what is taught to you the pains are not very painful she said smiling well you have now learnt that nouns are the names of persons and of places but the grammar says that they are also names of things oh yes i understand that without any pains at all mamma do pray let me tell you what things are nouns i hope you do not mean to name them all said her mother for as you know that everything is a noun you would never have finished oh no replied mary i cannot name everything in the whole world only some of those i know best table is a noun and chair and stool and my doll and my toys too but mamma she cried suddenly interrupting herself if everything is a noun what can the other parts of speech be everything is a noun my dear but not every word the words for and pretty for instance are not nouns no said mary for the words for and pretty are neither persons places nor things so they cannot be nouns well but mamma if i were to teach sophie grammar i mean when she's a little older do you know how i should set about it no indeed i cannot guess said her mother laughing but i should be very curious to know what new method you have discovered after such a profound study of grammar as you have made nay mamma do not laugh at me said mary half vexed well come tell me what your method is why then i should tell sophie that a noun is the name of everything and then it would be done at once for when she knew that everything was a noun there would be nothing more to learn about it your method said mother is the most simple and correct but do you not think that if she had learnt it thus all at once she might forget it all at once also do you not think that all we have said about nouns and dividing them into classes of persons places and things has helped to imprint them on your memory so it has mamma i should not have remembered half so well what a noun was if we had not talked of so many and found out whether they belonged to persons places or merely things oh mamma she continued looking out the window there is a noun called a carriage coming trotting down the hill so fast does the carriage trot my dear oh no i mean the horses but you know they are nouns too as well as the carriage horses are nouns because they are the names of animals and a carriage is a noun because it's the name of a place or of a thing she said interrupting herself but it is certainly not the name of a person but said her mother there are some persons in the place perhaps yes said mary a carriage is a place that holds people not things like a box or drawers i think i may have seen things in a carriage mary i and felt them too very inconveniently when we go into the country and it is full of packages but what is there in this carriage 
i cannot tell yet mamma it is too far off oh now i see a gentleman and a lady and they are nouns because they are persons but i cannot see inside to know whether there are any parcels and do you hear the sound of the carriage wheels yes that i do she replied it makes a fine noise coming trotting on at such a rate well then noise is a noun for whatever you can hear see taste smell or feel is a noun and you can hear a noise mary looked astonished then mamma she said nouns are not only things of all kinds but other words besides for noise and sound are not things at least not common things that we can see and touch such as chairs and tables that is true said her mother they are of a different nature but they are still things do you not say a loud noise is a very disagreeable thing a sweet sound is a pleasant thing these nouns are certainly rather more difficult for you to understand than those which you call common nouns but you must take pains to remember that whatever we discern by any of our five senses is a noun our five senses repeated mary those are seeing hearing smelling tasting and feeling and by what sense do you discern those nouns which you call common such as tables and chairs why we see tables and chairs and we can touch them too if we please so we know them by two senses seeing and feeling and we discern the sound of a noise by the sense of hearing then said mary thunder is a noun because i can hear it and lightning is a noun because i can see it and you are a noun mamma over and over again for first you are a person then i can see you and feel you when i touch you and hear you when you speak but i cannot smell you her mother then took out a handkerchief and mary exclaimed oh i can smell you now so sweet and she jumped up on her mother's lap to smell the perfumed handkerchief i hope you're not going to taste me mary said mother drawing back and laughing her mother then told her that a noun was often called a noun substantive what is that inquired mary everything that exists replied she is a substantive but you will understand that better by and by their attention was then caught by a carriage stopping at the door oh mamma cried mary they are getting out it is uncle and aunt howard i am so glad and uncle and aunt are nouns and i hope the little nouns are come too you know what i mean mamma emily and mary we must go and meet them said her mother mary ran on first and arrived at the door just in time to receive them End of chapter 1